Every single person is driven by one thing. And that one thing is an intense desire for selfless love. A love won't be found on the TV set and can't be bought in the store. We search for relationships that are full with reciprocation. And only a weak person will deny that. These things are temporary. We're not temporary. Sex is suffering! Sex? People go after sex like it's the, like the only thing in the world. But there's a time in the world, in your life, where you're not going to be able to have sex. And if you depend on it for happiness, you're in a lot of trouble because you're going to suffer. Bam! Another friend sticks to the mainstream. Another sucker subscribe to the north. The same reason why I, ch I chant and meditate in the morning is the same reason why I jump around on the stage. It's funny sometimes people say that religion or the Hare Krishnas don't belong in hardcore. But the Hare Krishnas have been in hardcore longer than any of these people. And, it has, and it, there, there is some connection because the whole idea of hardcore is to reject this society, this culture that's like forced us into a lifestyle that we, we don't want to be a part of. And Krishna consciousness is about rejecting that lifestyle and finding, you know, and it coming to the real. But you're not waking up this time. We are not waking up. Let's cry over lifeless eyes. So like a hardcore band, it appears to be a very material, solid, hard, heavy thing. But if it's contacted with the spirit, then it becomes energized. Like if you plugged it into an electrical outlet, it becomes electrical. So when, when we plug it into Krishna by using the band as a way to express emotion for Krishna and also to serve him, please him, introduce people to him, then the band also becomes another aspect of meditation or yoga. It becomes an aspect called karma yoga. My typical day is that um, I wake up very early, maybe 2.30 2 in the morning, and then I meditate early in the morning. On, on the names of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And on these beads, these are meditation beads. And, uh, you know, I, I meditate, I chant one mantra on each bead. There's 108, that's why the band's called 108. The person who's the, the manager of this temple, uh, his name is Lakshmi. His, his regular name is Larry Puglisi. He was probably the, f the person to introduce Krishna consciousness to the hardcore scene. He started to do uh, programs that we call Food for Life, where we just go out and feed people, anybody, mainly homeless people, but whoever comes. And he decided, let's do it in Tompkins Square Park. 
And Tompkins Square Park is a place where all the punks hang out and where all the homeless people hang out. And that's why he wanted to do it there. But everybody else was kind of like, all the devotees were kind of like, you know, that's where all the punks and the homeless people are. And he's like, yeah, well, that's the idea. You know, let's go there. That's where these people are people who need things. They, they, first of all, they need food. Second of all, they need something spiritual to pull themselves out of that Tompkins Square muck. You know? But what he also did was he did concerts. He did punk rock concerts at Tompkins Square Park. He would book like Black Flag, the Chrome X, and put them on, and then, then he would distribute the, the prasad or the food at the, at the shows there. So that's how he met John Joseph, Harley, and the bands, the bands of that era, like Antidote. But actually, it was mainly John Joseph <coughs> and Harley, and I believe that they had like a kind of a circle of friends too. So it was that era. I, he would know the year better. I think, I guess it was like '84. It was funny because I was in the military, like I said, you know, and I used to hang out in D.C. and the devotees would be chanting in D.C. and I'd be like, ah, making fun of them and stuff. And two years later, I was out there myself doing the same thing. That's Vishnu. Uh, he's an expansion of Krishna in the material world for uh, creation. Like, you know, that's what they say. Vishnu creates, uh, Brahma maintains, and Shiva destroys. I've also got Lord Shiva here. The reason why parents are not so thrilled is because they, they want to have, it's natural, they, they want to have a child that they can brag about and feel good about. And that you can't brag that your child's a Hare Krishna. <laughs> Oh, my God.